Um, greetings to you, Joseph. Greetings, uh, Stuart, everyone who has been joining us all this while, and to all the members of um, Pan African Thought and United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us all the time. I, we are talking today about um, society, culture, and then uh, ritual. That's what we are talking today. And I would like us as much as possible to be open-minded in receiving and also sharing freely whatever it is that we know. I do not pride myself as an island of knowledge, but I'm gonna tell you from my own perspective. Society, the culture we practice in those societies and the ritual in that society, First of all, we have to understand that they are the handwork of men like you and I. Every society is formed based on ideology. Culture is what is used to sustain a society. Culture and religion or politics, a system of conditioning mankind to obey, to stand at attention and to follow up the script given to them by the elite of that society who feel they know better. And in so doing, or by so doing, culture is an instrument or a weapon being used by the elite of a society to achieve their own aim and gain. In politics, they call it constitution. In religion, they call it doctrines. In so-called free society, they call it culture. And if we are not so careful, we realize that the same effect of constitution and doctrination or doctrines is the same effect of most of the things we call culture today. Do not ask questions. To not face life with your senses in your palm. To just take it and say, so it was like this in the days of my ancestor. It will be like this now. Life, eternity. Most times we have to understand that the flexibility of the culture a society practice directly impacts or reflect on how valuable such society is. My mission in life is for the African people to know and discover their identity and also try to carve a new niche for themselves and hand over a better society for their descendants. And I would not be wrong if I say that majority of what we call African culture, which we pride ourselves on today, are nothing but barbaric innovations and initiatives. I would not say there are no good things in our culture, but I would say, what about the bad things in our culture? Who is going to undo that? Who will be bold enough to stand up and say, this cannot go any further from here? For one of the culture in Africa, there has depreciated us in value every single second is the culture of elders are always right. In Africa, if you live in Africa, it will be a taboo, an aberration for you to query, question, challenge the authority 
of anyone who is as much as one day older than you. And what they tell you is that, what do you know? Now, I beg to differ by telling people who listen to me that do you know that a foolish youth can become a problematic elder? So if elders are always right, and this elder actually have a content of a foolish youth in him because of great air, I might have plunged my life in a ditch just because he's older. And you look at the elders are always right today, where has it brought us? Look at the effect on our politics, where we have the young brain, sharp brain, fresh brain, who can move the whole nation in Africa to what we call the promised land. But we feel that if a man is not age 70, age this and that, we can't and they die in office. The culture of elders are always right has also reduced us to respect a person more than the institution which they actually administer. There's something different between us and the Caucasian, and that's it is the office they respect, not the person occupying the office. So if you see them saying, Mr. President this, Mr. President that, do you think it's not intentional that they don't mention the name of this Mr. President? Because to them, they are not dealing with Joe Biden. They are not dealing with, uh, with uh, uh, Donald Trump or Barack Obama. They are dealing with Mr. President of the nation. And it is the office of that particular nation they refer to and respect. But in major cities, or let me say, countries in Africa today, it is the person occupying the office that we respect. Why? Because charity that began at home says that elders are always right. And look at our very key and sensitive parastatas today in African nation, you realize they are occupied by some bunch of old people who have no clue about what it is that they are doing there. The culture of elders are always right, are always right, has also brought us to a kneel where we bow, we prostrate, we do all sorts. So the so-called kings who occupy our ancestral throne and all they use the ancestral throne to do is to snatch our land, sleep with our wives, and then go as our representative for the benefit of themselves. Can I take you back in the history lane about the great Bini kingdom that is now included in Nigeria of today? The Oba of Bini made a pact with English authority to protect him against the invasion of other European countries. Did you hear what I said? He made a pact, a treaty with the British authority to protect him. Because a lot of you wonder why the great Bini kingdom came down. Nobody tells you this. That is part of our selfishness. That is part of some shenanigans that we put across. And because elders are always right, kings are always authority. We could not query them. He made this pact to protect himself against other European invasion. So he pledged allegiance to British authority. It sounds good. You didn't listen to me. Himself, not Bini Kingdom. Did you get the English right now? He sparked with the British authority is to protect him as the Oba of Bini Kingdom, the King of Bini Kingdom, only him and his household, not even Bini people or Bini kingdom. Now we can't query that because Oba is seen as God. Oba cannot be queried. Decision of Oba is final. That's one of the culture in Africa we need to get rid of. Now it was so foolish that if for God, that you can't understand English like an Englishman. The part he made against, uh, he made with British authority to protect himself against the European invasion, other European invasion, did not eradicate the clause 
that he himself cannot be evaded by European authority. Did you get the point now? The pact was to protect him against other European invasion. He himself alone. The pact does not say that the European authority cannot invade him. So at the end of the day, because of his foolishness, because he will not listen to his counselors, because he will not take the opinion of the masses, because Oba is always right. It is the same British government that he made pact with that destroyed him. African people will die in their war. Today saying that the British people came to cut away our images, our bronze image, our this and that. Who are the people who opened the door for these people? People who told us that we can't query them, that elders are always right, that the king is authority. And the beautiful thing is that those people, those Caucasians know how to keep papers. Either you like it or not, so many of these precious artifacts were not taken away by invasion. They were taken away by, by seals where someone is ready to sell what is artist carved from original in inspiration for the price of bicycle spoke, for the price of umbrella, for the price of mirror. Those who sold human beings into slavery will sell anything. So you can't totally just condemn the white. If we didn't open our house to them, they won't cut away our valuables. That kind of culture today exists amongst us in African community and within our families. The man feels it cannot be queried by the wife. The mother feels it, she cannot be queried by the, by the children. And the children naturally just go to school to cram, not to be educated. And when they get to school, the teacher say understood. They say understood because they never was raised with the culture of querying and asking questions. See how we were tra treated in slavery. See how religion also taught us that servants obey your master. See how politics told us that it is a felony uh, treason and it is a coup intended for you to protest against the government of your nation. This culture moved from one level to the other and it became the order of the day today. But I will say we don't have culture that are superb, that are awesome in our society. Yes, we do. And this culture actually been created, let me say origin, it they originated from number one, our geographical location, our, our climatic condition, and also maybe our experiences through life. For example, it is not in the culture of African people, I was saying it the other day, it is not in the culture of African people to turn. What are we turning? What are we turning? And so when uh, a Caucasian could go around with bikini and uh, a spaghetti and uh, a tongue or a G-string in the name of Wandi Totan. It is alien in the culture of African people, Totan. Because look at your skin. What are you turning? If you hear some noise, because it's raining here in Nigeria today, so a little bit of background. What are you turning? Are you trying to be influenced? Or you are trying to, you know, by saying you're going for turning? It is not in our culture to turn. We have nothing to turn. Look at your skin. Look at my skin. What else do you have to, to turn? Are you looking for an excuse to walk around the street naked? Or you are just trying to lie to yourself? I'm sorry, I'm blunt today. I'm always blunt like that. It is not in the culture of African people to celebrate Halloween. What is your business with Halloween? Is that the way your ancestors return? Halloween is the return of the ancestors. And then you fall into the culture of aliens. 
And if you are an African person celebrating Halloween in UK or America, I will understand that you have been usurped by the prevailing culture there. But what is the business of a Nigerian living in Nigeria, a South African living in South Africa, a Kenya living in Kenya, a Ghanaian living in Ghana, celebrating Halloween? What is your business with it? Yeah, we have several mask festivals which we can say equate to their Halloween, where we know that our ancestors come to offer good words and decree upon us. They go from one household to another. And what we do in return is to give them some change, some coins here and there. And they even agree that this person is not the ancestor, but making himself available to be possessed by the spirit of the ancestors. An African child will not celebrate a Gungun festival. But he or she will celebrate or even invest money in celebrating Halloween. What is the history of Halloween? The culture of African people is beautiful, full of content. But I'm saying, how many of them are barbaric? And how many of them are worthy of being celebrated? Are we? suddenly now saying the influence of the Caucasian or the invaders upon us is so great we can't get out of it and we don't have a mind of our own to think independently that we have to follow their culture for every race that forget the culture that is particular to them has lost their identity, lost their identity. It is not in the culture of African people especially men, to walk around without covering their head. You may say that is the culture of the Jews. Where did the Jews learn it from? But today we see African folks who go around, you know, living like that, you know, all those stuff. It is not in the culture of African people to get married without their virginity intact. Let me break the B nest now. It is an aberration. No matter where you go in all African country and you try to look at that particular culture of their sexuality, sexuality is one of the most strict institutions in Africa nations. It is an aberration, a taboo, a disgrace to your old family for you to marry without your virginity intact, irrespective of the gender that you are. It may be as if it is easy to take it out on the women more than the men. I'll tell you a brief story now, and I'd like you to listen. In the ancient African system, the girl child is the pride of her family, not the boy child. You may believe me, you may discard it. A girl child is the pride of her family, not the boy child. So they take extra care extra attention, extra money, extra love to nurture a girl child. You know why they guide and guard greatly around the girl child? Because she is the universe and she's the only link between where we are and where we are going to. She's the source of our fertility. She's the reason for our continuity. She's everything pure in our society. And so they know that a bath canal is not supposed to be assessed by random energies, by worthless men. And what did they do? They put down with a culture, something like a tradition, to guard against that by ensuring that every child who is a girl Start womanhood with her energy intact and pure. There are so many consequences. Having different DNAs being dumped into you as a woman, having different DNA being get, getting into you as a man also. But I'll focus on the female children, female children now, not because we want to flog them, but because maybe they will know their importance in our society. And so it was a culture that every girl child must get married as a virgin. On the night of her wedding day, 
friends of the groom are outside. Family of the groom are outside. They lay a bed sheet, plain white for her. They give the man a white handkerchief. They tell him to go into her. And he gets into her and she's not a virgin. He comes out with a plain handkerchief. When he comes back with a stained handkerchief, apart from the dowries and all the money they have paid as an appreciation for training your girl child up, what the family of the groom do, or the friend of the groom, is to get new set of gifts as an appreciation for the family of this woman. Why do they do that? Is that the worth of that girl? No. Is that the value of the girl? No. The reason why they do that is to appreciate this family for bringing purity into their life, for availing them the chance to pro propagate, let me not say propagate, or reproduce, or continue through the canal of a woman considered as holy in terms of that, pure energy, no pollution. Or if the other is the case, what they do is to take a broken calabash, broken pot, a goat with a blind eye, a stained cloth, rags, and all of that, and take it to the family of that woman with song in their mouth. And do you know what happened? The family of such women in those days, sometimes they have to ask count, run away totally from that town, never to be seen again. Why? They have brought impurity into the settlement. Is this too strict? Yes, I will say it is. For if they put such measure and pressure on women, who is putting pressure on men? How do we determine the virginity of a male child? That's the barbaric way we can look at that culture. But is that culture actually bringing fruit that is worthy to be identified with? In those days, yes, it was. These days, this thing, if you put a mileage meter on it, Sometimes you, you realize that the mileage cannot even watch what you uh, measure what is already there because people have gone far. Sexuality is now seen as a book, as a trend amongst us these days. Sexuality is seen as a way of proving your worth to someone. Sexuality is now being sold as a transactional product. Women want to get up now, they still be their way up. Men want to offer a favor now. They have to sleep with that person. They want to have favor. They give a favor to you. There's a lot of things wrong about that culture, but there are many things right about the culture also. The culture of respecting each other. The moment we get to a certain age grade, is it disappearing quickly? You can't look at a married woman in the face the moment you know she's already married. It is a taboo. It is wrong for you to even desire another man's wife. For in this day and age that we are, <laughs> a lot is happening we don't want to mention. Now, the Bible did not teach us holiness. The Bible does not have the moral justification to teach us holiness. We know how things run here in those days. And if you call it holiness, we call it culture. There are beautiful things in our culture. In our culture, it is a taboo and it is wrong for another man to touch your head because that is your sacred place. For another woman to touch your head because that is a sacred place. So it is people within family that make air for their family members, not an outsider. I'm not saying this to take away business from the mouth of those who are into fashion designing or maybe makeup artists or hairstylists. But I'm saying that was what was obtainable in those days. Why was that culture inaugurated? Because your head is your most sacred place and the source of every spiritual energy that you have. When time was yielding and involvement was coming, our fathers would rather go on dreadlock 
than have their head being touched by a random person all of the time. And women also, they'll go on dreadlock or have somebody from the household to pay their head. A man that is married in those days or a boy child who have the woman in his life plate his hair. Now, the culture of plating hair, is that something bad? That's not something bad. The culture of having a ring by men, is that something No. As a matter of fact, in those days, it was the men that do most of the fashion stuff than the women. Because they are, they are in the feminine position in those days. It was the women who were doing the authority, decree, and all sorts of uh, decision making in those days. So they made their hair. The men made their hair. The men use airing. As a matter of fact, I say you to, the, to you today, you may prove me wrong, but do your research. It was the men who were wearing waist bead and anklet and wrist bead and all of those things. You may want to do your research on that. But today we have a very segregated society where someone gets so toxic, toxic in their masculinity and another gets so bitter in uh, femininity. It wasn't like that, that those days. Now, this culture somehow was polluted intentionally. Some of them were created for the benefit of the elite in that society. Because I'm older, because I am more influenced, because I have a little knowledge than you, I create a culture just to imprison you, to perpetually put you under subjection. Several other cultures that we have. To maintain the virginity of a female child those days, they resorted to what we call circumcision, female circumcision. We cry so much about female circumcision. Yes, it is dangerous. But nobody seems to cry about male circumcision. Is this something the Brahmic religion taught us? No, it is the tradition of the African people. Now, why do they go after the female genital part? Now, they feel that a girl child, for her to not have unwanted pregnancy, for the menace of baby mama and baby dada, not to destroy her to society in these days, they felt as sexuality need to be tampered with. That is barbaric, you know, but you come together and condemn it amongst African nations who still practice it. I know some northern part of Africa and uh, Nigeria still practice that. Now, they take away a clitoris. In taking away the clitoris of this woman, they deny her of whatever it means to have sexual pleasure. In the process of wanting to make her retain her body, not have sexual affinity, have unwanted pregnancy, and all of those things, they eventually destroy our future. We should condemn that. But what is the motive behind that? That is the motive. Wanting to destroy everything that will bring disrepute to the African society. Disrepute of teenage pregnancy, of water pregnancy, and all sorts of nonsense things that mess up our society today. Why do they take away the... the the first thing of a male, male child to give him more sensitivity and somehow to promote hygiene in him. Now, that culture alone, we can debate it from now to tomorrow. It is a masculine culture. Male humans came together and did that. Why? Those are the kind of culture we need to condemn. The reason why you do it for a male child is to give him sensitivity when it comes to sexual pleasure while taking it away from the female child. A lot is wrong in that kind of culture. Now, the culture of you can ask questions, we have had, we have handled that also. All of these, when we come back together to look at them, they form the backward society that we live in in Africa today. But in the beginning, was that the way it was? No, it was. That wasn't it. Can I take you back to memory lane? A lane that you may never know how it was made. In those days, it was the women who were having more than one husband. And the culture that was prevalent then is natural. 
you can't determine a child's paternity in those days. Let me put it in another way. It is not child's paternity that matters to African ancestors for a child's maternity. Do we know a mother? That's all. Now you see family where a single woman serving more than one husband, no envy, no jealousy. Apologies to the men here. I'm not promoting sexual orgies or whatever you call it. Three song, four song, whatever song. A lot of people know a lot of this song and then they don't even know the total sum of pi in school. Give them compound interest to calculate. They cannot calculate the total sum of compound interest in the next five years, over $100. But they know all that kind of sum. May you not summarize yourself. Now, we're moving on. The women in those days, we call it polyandry. If there was no event, there would be no word to qualify. They were the one who was, who was having more than one husband. And no one is the head of the home except the woman of the home. Whoever she likes is who she go into. So when a woman is pregnant, there is no debate about who is the father of this baby. The only question is who is the mother of this baby? Now look at how that translates into our spirituality today. In our spirituality today, you realize that whenever divination is supposed to be made, or whenever a rite or a ritual is supposed to be carried out, no one asks about your father's name. The only concern is your name and your mother's name. Why? Because if a man knows your name and also know your mother's name, he has already gotten a password into you. Why is that? The canal, the channel, the funnel, the pipeline through which you came into this physical world is not your dad. All he did was to put a span spell out there, but of your mother. I will talk about the mixing of blood, the intimacy between child and their parent. And we can only link that to the women. According to an Oxford research I was saying yesterday, they said we our children inherit 72% of their mother's IQ. The rest 28, they get from their fathers. I guess that's the reason why some men don't want to marry slave women. That's why so many men don't want to marry just any other woman. They want to marry a woman that, you know, their children can look up to. Now, in African settlement or society in those days, the culture was that a woman is the one who determines who owns the child. And she doesn't even have to be queried as long as the child comes from her. When the invaders came, they brought their Bible, they brought their Korea, they brought so many other shenanigans. And they re-engineered our society to become a masculine society. And the moment femininity was taken away from our culture, our life became hard. The moment the softness of life was taken away from our culture, our life became so rigorous. Now you will hardly see a man who enjoyed hustling. You will hardly see a man who enjoyed just going out in the morning, working from you know, morning till night and all that. You will hardly see. They were not used to it. They were not configured for that pain. They were not configured for all that. You can have a child or two with a man. The day it seems that things are not going so well, he pick one or two shirts and run away. They will, they will show up in the next 25 years with a sorry, but the woman will never run away. She will stand, she will stay, she will train up these children. Something should tell you about the strength of these women. Now, look at their ovulation. It comes with pain. 
even the sex you have with them comes with pain. Talk about their menstrual cycle comes with pain. Talk about the pregnancy period comes with pain. Talk about the delivery comes with pain. Almost pain personified, but they carry it with grace and they do well with it. A quarter of the pain a woman go through during ovulation, during ovulation, if you put it in a man, the whole world will crumble down. Mother is having fever. The house is well kept. The kitchen is still running. The children are eating. The man is going to work. The moment a man has ordinary headache, everything has to shut down. They were not wired for that. I'm not trying to justify it. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the biological configuration of all of us and how the invasion is actually rewriting the history and the way we should behave. Now, these women, our society as African people, is our society giving them a say at all? Are they in their rightful place in our society? Now, I'm not talking to massage your feminism ego here. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a supporter of toxic fe feminism. I don't believe in gender equality. I only believe in human equality. I will treat you the way I want to be treated. And I will treat you sometimes also the way you want to be treated. I'm not gonna treat you as a woman or as a man. I'm gonna treat you as a human being. There are things our biological wiring has taught us that we can't do. I can't carry pregnancy. It's only a woman that can carry it. I can't do so many things a woman can do. So fighting for gender equality is shenanigan to me. But giving you a level playing ground and giving you a fair opportunity in society, yes, I'm, I'm really interested in that. But in the order of the way our ancestor made it look or made it so in cultural affairs, are we giving these women chance to be the spearhead in our society? How many of our rituals have we condemned women of being a part of just because our culture says it? How many times have we condemned these women that they can't partake in one or two things in our society just because they are going through a natural clock of life by menstruating. How many of them have we condemned into the dungeon of being witches, wizards, just because they are pretty looking, they are intelligent? How many of these women has been stoned to death just because they are fine? How many of them do we call a marine spirit person and the ritual or the spirituality of propagating spiritual husband is way more than propagating spiritual wife. Suddenly, the women can be invaded forcefully by one spirit, but men cannot be. <clears throat> everything bad, everything in society is being put on women. The Bible said they were the one who allowed serpents to deceive the man, lack of sense of taking responsibility. The same thing Korean said. Somehow we write it in African society also to condemn them and tell them they are not good enough, they are not worthy enough. I'm saying, look at a nation that is being led or being led by a woman and see their improvement compared to those ones being led by men. We are war prone, violent prone. Women don't think like that. When they take on a project, they take it up as a mother to see it through. Check all the multinational companies we have today. How many of them stood the test of time and still running after 100 years? Put such a company in the hand of a woman and it will be transgenerational. The culture of the man is the head of the home amongst us as African people. It's something that is bringing about 
destruction to us. Now the women are reacting. They are stabbing us to death. They are poisoning our food now. They are strangling us to death. Unfortunately, in many African nations, when your wife pronounces you dead, nobody do autopsy. No postmortem test. If I tell you how many men died in the hand of their bitter wife, you would not believe. Just because we allow them, we didn't allow them rather to express themselves. Their culture, we inherited it from our fathers. It needs to stop. I don't want to mention the culture of, let me not go into that. The availability of internet and the erotic way we display our bodies these days. The nudity in social media and how it seems as if an African woman is an object of that. They can't promote their Pepsi without putting an African woman Botox on it. What is the correlation, Joseph? What is the correlation between a woman's Botox and drinking a soda, a soda water? What is the correlation? But you know, these <laughs> women will gladly shake that Botox. A person cannot release a music video right now without having naked women splash all around dancing erotically. Are you, list, are you trying to sing a lyrics to me or you are trying to give me a pawn hub? And you see the systematic way our society has bashed. Then we have another culture now where we demean ourselves. An average African woman will be proud to call herself a bitch. An average African uh, man will be proud to call himself a bad boy. We refer to ourselves as nigger. We even call ourselves dog. What kind of culture is that? What kind of culture is that? We have gone way further from what we started this African society upon. Now, what was prevalent in those days? Do your own, let me do my own. But inside of you, you must remember the son or the daughter of who you are. Don't do things because of your family. Do things because the future is awaiting you. And unfortunately, it was not only, it is not only internet that don't forget. Human beings don't forget. An astute politician who, are, who is actually a rogue by my own standard in Ibadan or your state was saying something the other day said, we don't want to know the person who first slept with your mother. Don't go into politics. We want to aspire to be something, someone, somebody in life. But look at the culture of I don't give a damn. My children will figure out their life and see how what we are doing today is going to deny those children of a good, sane society and good name in the future. We talk about ritual. In our spirituality here also, I kind of know that these people, anyway, it's all right. Do you know that there is such a concept of money ritual in African society, in African spirituality, that some people practice? Do you know? Money doubly ritual. A lot of nonsense that they give to themselves. And do you know who suffer most in the hand of money ritualists? It is the same women. A certain babala will tell you to go and bring a breast of a woman bring the vagina of a woman, bring this, bring that. You will really see them asking for the private part of a man as a money ritual. And this culture of a man can have his money, a woman cannot have, plunged so many of us into debt, untimely debt. And it seems as if, if a woman is not used, a champ cannot be potent. I tell you freely here today, some people might be listening to me who have come to me for that. They may not be listening to me because I don't keep in touch with them. More men come to say we should do charm to hypnotize their wives in African community. I'm not talking about African in Africa. I'm talking about even African, American, British, African, and all that. To hypnotize their wife than women who come to say hypnotize my husband. Let me tell you a quick story. A certain guy, you know, came to me, introduced his wife to me. 
and his whole aim is that. I want to come back home to Africa, but I want you to give me a charm that will lock my wife perpetually in Europe. Why? He is unemployable in that Europe, but the wife is a nurse. He wants to come home and enjoy his life and lock the wife perpetually there in Europe, let her work for money and send it to him while they move around with girls and fool around with so many. And it's not the only one. A lot of them come for that. What I'm saying today in a nutshell is that majority of our culture is a woman batching culture, if we look at it very well. And until we give these women a right to their own voice, a liberty to be who they are, men will keep dying untimely in African society. You put on yourself more than you can bear. You try too much. It is nothing wrong if you die young or untimely because you are into what you don't have business doing. You want to prove a point that is not even been, that is not needed only because you refuse to give her a level playing ground and allowing her to be herself. Now we know that, you know, according to social constructs, women cannot do some certain things. But I tell you today, there's nothing a man can do that a woman can't do. And there's nothing a woman can do that a man cannot pay for. In the absence of trying to weaponize money and wealth, would you still say you are valuable as a man to your woman? In the absence of weaponizing sex, would you women also say you are still valuable to a man in the absence of sex? Let's say you can get the sex somewhere else. What value are you bringing to that? Let's say she can get her own money, buy her own car, because they're already buying their cars and living in their own houses now before you meet them. So you feel insecure because who you are looking for is a slave, not a partner, not a wife. How would you say you are relevant to her life if she has provided for herself all that she needs or all she will ever ask from you? Why? Because we lived or we were grown in a culture that make us use each other and feel that one is above the other. There is not one God greater than another. That's the concept of African spirituality. And then we look at it and say, this culture of now, we are just living life on a freelance mode. It used to be a culture in Africa here that every child is make divination for before they start their life. In Africa, spirituality, in Yoruba world, yeah, they call it a Jose Jaye. You check out the life of that child, and then you help them to guide them. You help them to live to their maximum you know, performance. Today, we allow the children to figure things out themselves, not because there is no freedom there, but at least we have a basic information about what purpose this child is meant to fulfill. So we have people who are going to countries they have no business with living in a nation they have no business in. African-American talk to me a lot. And most times they complain about the oppression, the suppression and all of that that they go through in Europe and in America and all that. And my only question is, what are you looking for there? That's my only question. Is it like you came home and we are telling you that you are not black enough? Are you home and we are telling you that you are not better than us or you are not better like us? Nobody is going to discriminate against African person who step in African soil today, I tell you for free. But you have decided to stay in the land of the slavery, but you, you are now complaining about enslavement. So what do you want me to do? Is there a magic I can come perform? If that place does not pay you, come home. But you want to eat your cake and, not, and also have it. If you leave Africa for corrupt leaders, who will develop Africa? If the best of our human resources and every of our brain do not transport themselves to Europe, to America, and all that, the same quality of invention you are doing there, the same effort you are doing there, the tax you are paying to them here, if you gonna eat and develop Africa with it, this will be the best continent in the entire world. We complain about corrupt leaders. Am I going to be, am I only, my voice, do you think my voice alone can change the narrative? If that's the reason why you don't want to come home, you have to be present to change the narrative. You have to be there. 
And then it became another culture amongst us where an average African feels if he has not stepped Europe, if he has not stepped America, his life cannot be better. Sometimes they go through the desert of Libya to connect to Spain and they die in the sea. It became a monumental culture in some family that it is those who have gone abroad that are making sense in life. As if if you have not gone abroad, you cannot be someone in life. We need to break such culture also amongst us in Africa. There is enough food in Africa. The Europe you run to come to Africa to get their money. The France you go to come to Africa to get our gold. The America you go to come to mine our mineral resources here. Everything that you are going there to look for, they take it from here. This is the food basket of humanity. But you are, you are quick to leave it and then you complain about there is no home to come back home, to. Come back to. If you leave your, your house in the hand of a stranger, don't expect to meet a bed that is laid well to your standard at least. We have all of this culture. Of course, Ajaye will now tell, it, tell us that this child is supposed to go into mining of metal or carving of wood or doing this and that. Then we now begin to watch the child. Most time, the Akose Jaya matches with the way the child behaves. Parenting used to be a culture of intention here in Africa, but it seems like a culture of convenience and social status nowadays. These days, we give back to children just to put our name on them, like we buy cars to put our name on the car. Parenting used to be, I'm giving myself, sacrificing who I am to make another human being by following their own blueprint in life. We have children who should be studying how to bend iron. Today, they are graduates of, um, of biochemistry. So they complain that they are not making headway. You cannot invent in an area that is not your purpose. You will not be passionate enough in it. We have people who are supposed Mr. to Baba, be farmers. Can you, um, can you wrap, I'll wrap you up? To... Yeah, I'm thank you. Wrap up. Yeah. We have people who are supposed to be farmers, <laughs> but in today's society, they are doctors. So they are not concerned and passionate or having any compassion on human life. We have them lurking around, fixed a wrong profession. Their aim and their motivation these days is how much are they going to pay me rather than how useful will I be in that profession? How useful will I be in that profession? I think I've touched basically most of the things that I want to touch, but in shutting up, I'm going to say that the concept of a, 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 a ritual and the bringing about of human sacrifice, I tell you the truth today, there is nothing that correlates with uh, cannibalism or predatory practice and African spirituality. It is forbidden to as much as use even the strand of the air of another person for anything. For you are not the maker and you don't have a right over there. Am I saying it's not possible? Yes, it is possible. There are such knowledge in African spirituality where just a strand of the air with me, I can mess you up. Even your speed to, they call it saliva. If you can't get that, if you step your feet on a place and I can get the sand from that place, I can mess that love up. If I don't have any of this and I just call you in some ways, call the language or use the language, the method of nature and all that, I can also assassinate you. There are such toxic knowledge, negative knowledge in African spirituality. But is it a practice? No, it is not. The fact that it's not a practice does not mean that we should not know the nook and cranny of life. So people say human sacrifice. Your ancestors were not sacrificing humans. Did I, am I, did I say that people don't do human sacrifice? They do. After all, it is so on the basis of human sacrifice that you became a Christian and you gladly go to church every week to go and drink blood and you eat flesh, but you don't see anything wrong with that. Am I saying there are some African spiritualists who don't engage in human sacrifice 
I'm not saying that. What I'm saying in the beginning, was that so? No, it wasn't. And a lot of negativity that the media is also pushing across about African spirituality or so-called religion, that it is not exactly the way it is.